Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Stranger here and welcome back to my channel. And today for our sound design tip, we're going to be doing the warp bass. And this is a classic bass sound that was used in the early 90s in Jungle. And you might recognize it in tracks such as this one, Super Sharpshooter by the Ganja Crew. And you might have also heard it in a lot of contemporary drum and bass tracks as well as in dubstep. So that's the sound we're going to be creating today. And again, we're going to be using Serum. So I'm just going to pull up Serum. And the waveform we're, that we're going to use to design the sound is going to be the square wave. So we're going to click here under analog. Now there's a couple of options to get the square wave. We can go into the basic shapes here and the, then adjust the wave table position until you find the square. So we got a square there. Uh, uh, there's another one. If you scroll down here, BSOD square. Now this does not look like a square uh, a waveform, but what what's happened here is it, it's removed all the unneeded um, harmonics so that uh, you get still get the sound of a square wave but it's, it's just removed all the redundancies I tend to like this one somehow this one I find sounds fa fatter so I'll just play it for you so that's how a square wave sounds right so if we go back to the basic shapes right? so it's really up to you you can use this one or the BSOD square. Okay. And the next step to get that warp bass sound. Now make sure you're playing the right octave. Remember with bass notes, you gotta be at the right octave to get that rumble. So that's a nice bass note. Okay. So you might have to adjust the octave on your keyboard to get it. I think I'm playing a negative A1 here. Okay. And following this step, we're going to enable the filter. And we're going to... Uh, now you can use the low pass 12. There's a couple different low passes here. Uh, the number simply means how how steep the slope is when it, when it, when it cuts off the high frequencies. Some people like it at 12 where it's less harsh. However, I do like it at the steepest where it's the most harsh. And you'll see the difference once we once we start modulating this uh, this cutoff. So basically basically the action that creates that warp bass sound is the cutoff going from low to high okay so to to automate this modulation we're simply gonna use envelope 2 we don't use envelope 1 because that's reserved for the amplitude so we're gonna go under envelope 2 click on the crosshair and drag it over to the cutoff okay okay now envelope 2 the attack needs to be adjusted to have that slide into the max volume. So if you adjust the attack here, you'll see now you get a slope and now play your note. So depending on how quick you want that warp to reach the maximum cutoff, will determine how, how long you adjust this attack. Now with a warp bass, you actually don't want it to actually reach the maximum cutoff. So we can adjust the amount that the the uh, the envelope modulation uh, affects the cutoff by adjusting this little. It looks like a uh, a horseshoe icon. You just click and drag down to bring the the max cutoff amount. And you'll see this this blue line around the knob decrease. And now you can adjust the cutoff. Maybe bring it down. Adjust the taste. I'm gonna 
make my attack quicker. Okay, I might bring my starting cutoff a bit lower too. Maybe adjust my... Okay. Now the next step to getting your warp to sound more warpy, for a lack of better terms, is we're going to adjust the resonance. So notice as we increase the resonance, you get more of that warpy sound. Now you don't want it too high, then it's it's uh then it gets too peaky. So adjust accordingly. Now you just gotta flip back through the different filters to show you the difference between the 6th pole up to the 24th pole. So now we're 18. Now we're at 12. 6. See, 6 is a little more open. 24 is the most closed. I'm finding 18 or 12 to be sounding pretty good, actually. Let's try 18. Now, to fatten up the... the the warp base we can increase the drive and the fat knob okay now we're going to move into the effects section now the classic warp base sound uses a delay there's a delay at, at the end of the tail, like that. Now, we just want to remove some of the feedback, so... Maybe increase the... Uh, or There we go. Maybe a bit quicker. Now we want to get rid of the low frequencies and the delay because we don't want any phasing. That seems to be alright. Maybe increase. It's just really subtle. There we go. Okay, so this is sounding pretty good. Maybe you want to add some reverb. It's up to you. But remember, when we, we add reverb to bass, we want to cut off the low frequencies. Okay, I'm going to try sequencing a bass line. And then go one eighth notes. Let's hear. Sometimes, you, because of the, the speed of the notes, you might have to adjust the attack so you get more of that warp. Uh, actually, sometimes we want to bring the sustain all the way down. So, so once the, the note reaches the maximum, and bring the decay so you get a sharp drop and increase the hold so now you get a more 
defined care uh, defined amplitude for this sound right we're getting some clicking so we're gonna adjust the decay just a little bit sort of tiny decay just to remove the clicking okay let's try that Okay, let's hear that over. I have an Amen beat here. And of course you can add additional EQing to your sound. You can bring in EQ8. So there's cer certain specific frequency areas which will bring up that warp sound. And we're hearing that in, at around 460. We can even hear this over a more slower tempo. Let's try a dubstep tempo. And we're good. We'll make. We'll start a new. We'll start a new pattern here. Sometimes we need to add a little bit of release too to help that clicking at the end of the note when when you let go of the note. There we go. And sometimes it helps to enable the mono mode, especially when we're writing bass notes. Uh, bass notes are meant to be played only one voice at a time so model will ensure there's no overlapping of notes and depending on the genre then you might want to tweak the sound accordingly so it fits the genre right <laughs> And that's the basics of creating that warp bass. If you want to go more modern, then you can add more effects to your sound. You might want to, for example, add some distortion to the sound. So we can try that. So that's one way to modernize the warp bass. You can even try perhaps a unison mode that might give you some interesting uh, results. That's pretty much it. From here on, you just gotta experiment, 
I recommend you guys to learn the basics first. Start with a basic square wave, enable the filter, set your cutoff start frequency, and then modulate your cutoff with envelope two, adjust the attack accordingly, and then from there on, experiment. And of course, adjust the, the, um, the decay and sustain accordingly as well. And that's pretty much it. So I want you guys to really practice and, and master this warp bass. It's fa a foundation to drum and bass and dubstep and bass music in general. And, and once you really master the sound, you're on your way to making some pretty crazy bass sounds for your track. So keep on practicing. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Let me what let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what kind of sound you want to learn for the next lesson. And until then, we'll catch you at the next video.